Well, hello there, and welcome to the second episode of Solitary Confinement with Rick Adams. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed episode one of Solitary Confinement, where I ramble on about the misplaced outrage of the uh, hashtag cancel Netflix, um, which was a couple weeks ago, and it seemed to already die out. So, so much for all that outrage. Um, and a special thank you to all who have listened and liked and commented and subscribed. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. And I promise you guys, Solitary Confinement with Rick Adams is only going to get better and better from here. Um, the more and more I do it, uh, the, the, the better and better it's going to get. I promise you. So thank you for all the love and support right out of the gate. It means the world to me. And if you happen to miss episode one of Solitary Confinement, please visit aka rickadams.com. That's aka rickadams.com. Uh, you can check out episode Solitary Confinement, plus my old show, uh, The Rationalist, as well as past comedy performances and uh, links to all my social media accounts. So you can uh, feel free to check it out and feel free to follow along. But that is completely up to you. Um, but I'd appreciate it if you do. Um, but for now, I'd like to jump right into today's main topic because it's very personal and it's a doozy. Uh, I want to talk about sobriety, um, especially since in the last couple of weeks, I'm sure you heard that uh, actor and podcaster Dax Shepard admitted to uh, kind of messing up his uh, impressive 16 years of sobriety by getting fucked up on the pain med uh, Vicodin, which is uh, a game I know all too well. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me personally, I'll quickly tell you that I was severely, severely addicted to pain medication uh, for many years, um, especially in my early 20s, um, particularly Percocet and Oxycontin, which then quickly escalated into becoming physically dependent on heroin. Um, now, when I say I was physically dependent on heroin, what I mean is without swallowing, snorting, or injecting a strong opioid like heroin or Oxycontin every six to eight hours every day, I would go into brutal, brutal withdrawal symptoms, which would basically leave me bedridden um, for a few days or, or even a week or so. And when I say bedridden, I mean severe mental and physical agony um, for, for days on end. Uh, and that's the stage Dak Shepard was quickly approaching. So I'm so glad he sought help when he did, because like any addiction, it only gets worse and worse and worse the more you, you, you put it off. Um, and just for clarification, there are three distinct stages uh, for drug and alcohol addiction. All right. The first stage is what we call use. Right? It's the weekend warriors, whatever your drug of choice. Let's just say alcohol, because alcohol is more socially acceptable than, you know, snorting pills or injecting heroin, right? So alcohol use will be the typical Friday or Saturday drinker. You know, you drink at parties, you have a few drinks at a wedding, maybe a glass of wine or two when you go out to dinner one night. You know, a quote unquote social drinker, if you will. So then from use, we quickly jump into the next stage, which is abuse. So maybe our drinking becomes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? It starts out with Thirsty Thursdays, then happy hour on Friday with our coworkers. Then Saturday, we have that fucking pub crawl for somebody's birthday. Um, so, there's, so there's alcohol on the menu there. And then Sunday, we're tailgating at the game. We're boozing it up. But then Monday rolls around and we're hungover as fuck, right? You feel like shit. We're depressed. We're anxious. So we need to feel better. So we have a few drinks on Monday, too. Now we're drinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And not because we enjoy it. Now it's out of necessity. Now we need to. And this goes on for a period because we don't think there's a problem. Everything is still going relatively well, right? We're still going to work every day. Our bills are paid. No real big complaints from anybody. We're just having a good time. And some people can handle this lifestyle, right? We call it a functioning alcoholic. But for many others, and myself included, we fit into this next category where we take things even further than that, which brings us to the final stage of addiction, which is dependency. Now, with dependency, we need our fix all day, every day, because our body is now physically dependent on the alcohol to function. 
This is the stage I was in with heroin. And this is where Dax Shepard was starting to get into, right? Dependency is where if you were to stop using suddenly, severe withdrawals will set in and you're fucked. You are fucked. You're bedridden, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're hot with cold sweats, your bones and muscles ache, your skin is fucking crawling up your body. And then on top of all that misery, you now have to tell your friends and family members what the fuck is going on, right? You already feel like the biggest piece of shit in the world. Now you have to describe to your family what the fuck has been going on the last couple months, few years. But thankfully, there are medications out there for both drug and alcohol dependency. So it will minimize those withdrawal symptoms, as well as the mental suffering, the depression, and the anxiety. But alcohol withdrawal can be deadly. So if you or a loved one is having a problem with alcohol, especially during this pandemic, seeking professional help is that first major step that will save your life. Seriously, I remember when I first admitted that I needed help. Yes, it was fucking terrifying to tell my parents that I was addicted to heroin, you know, because I failed them. But it was also so freeing to allow people into my life to actually help. You know, Dak Shepard and I are both really lucky to have that support system. You know, family and friends that are there to help you pick up the pieces. I'm forever indebted to my family and friends for all their support throughout the years and throughout the missteps. But many people don't have that support system, which makes getting and staying sober even more difficult. That's why funding proper mental health and drug rehab centers is of the utmost importance, especially moving forward from this pandemic. Because drug and alcohol dependency, it doesn't discriminate. It does not care how much fucking money you have or what fucking shitty town you live in. It affects all of us, whether we like to admit it or not. You know, you may have somebody in your family that has a, an addiction problem. One of your friends, one of your neighbors. You might not know anybody that's addicted, but, but they might live in your town and they're, and they're leaving dirty needles everywhere. It's affecting you in some way, shape, or form, whether you'd like to admit it or not. I guarantee you. So I'm glad Dak Shepard was able to share his struggle. And it's given me the courage to do the same. Because sobriety is really difficult, especially now during this pandemic and lockdown. You know, a lot of people assume that once you get sober, that's it. The hard part's over. You just stay sober. But it's never over. My brain is constantly trying to trick me into using drugs again. Like, for instance, I still have dreams about snorting Oxycontin or shooting up heroin. And those dreams are so real and so vivid that in the dream, I actually get mad at myself for ruining our sobriety. I'll quickly tell you the last drug dream I had because it's fucking crazy uh, and it happened a couple weeks ago, so it's still kind of fresh in my mind. So in this last drug dream, I was performing stand-up uh, at some random comedy club somewhere with late night legend Conan O'Brien, which I know may seem weird, but I had been watching old YouTube clips of uh, late night with Conan O'Brien. Um, before going to sleep that night. So so that's where Conan comes in. Anyway, in this drug dream, Conan and I are in the in the green room backstage uh, waiting for the show to start. And Conan turns to me and says, hey, uh, I brought a few oxys for the show. W would you like one? And in the dream, I remember having the thought, oh, shit, I don't want to ruin my sobriety, but I can't say no to doing drugs with one of my comedy idols, Conan O'Brien. Like, that's a hell of a story I'm going to get to tell. So, so Conan and I, in this drug dream, we each crush up an Oxycontin pill and snort it off the top of this mini fridge in the green room at this comedy club. And immediately, I regret it. Immediately, I hate myself, right? Immediately, I start saying to Conan, I shouldn't have done this. I just ruined my sobriety. Now, Conan feels like a huge asshole because he didn't know that I had a problem with oxys before he offered. So now he's distraught. I'm upset that he's distraught. We're both a mess. We're now hugging and crying for some reason. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I just wake up. And, and my body is literally on the verge of tears in real life, which is one of the strangest things to wake up to. But thankfully, I realized it was just a dream. I did not ruin my sobriety. So I, so I was so relieved. But then, because my brain is a cruel, cruel mistress, I had drugs on my mind for the next week or so. But thankfully, I did not act on those impulses because I've learned over time that giving into those impulses is only going to ruin my life or kill me. And that just comes with time. And yes, to be honest, in the past, when I was younger, I've given in to those impulses again. I've misstepped in my sobriety here and there. But it's not fucking up your sobriety. That's the key. 
Because without those missteps, we don't learn. Our brains are tricky little fuckers that will get out of control if we let our guard down, and that's what happens. So I applaud Dak Shepard for sharing. Drug and alcohol addiction is not a moral failing, but shame and embarrassment is always tied to it. So there is real strength in sharing our missteps. We're only human. Think about it. Drug and alcohol cravings are coming from the most primal portions of our brain. For example, I describe heroin cravings like having a crush on your ex-toxic lover. You know in your heart of hearts that they are horrible for you. You know the next time you meet up, they very well may kill you. And if they don't kill you, they'll at least ruin your current life. They'll burn everything to the ground with a goddamn smile on their face. And the most troubling part of all this is, we know it, but for some crazy reason, we still love them to death and think they are perfect for us. That is heroin craving in a nutshell. It's fucking crazy. But that's how powerful our brains are. Like I said, our brains are tricky little fuckers because it knows what it wants and it knows how to manipulate our thoughts to get what it wants. Try giving up sugar and watch what your brain does to get you to eat sugar again. All of a sudden, you'll pop up like the Manchurian candidate and go ransack your local 7-Eleven's candy aisle and you'll be back home stuffing your face with sugar before you even know it. It's wildly, wildly fascinating. So stories like these are a great reminder that no matter how many years of sobriety we may have, it's still one day at a time. Because tomorrow we may make that misstep, but it's how we adjust after that misstep that will determine where we are headed next. So if you or somebody you know is struggling with addiction, just know there is help available. There is a way out. Trust me, I thought the only way out of my heroin addiction was either death or jail. And while those two options are still on the table, getting sober and rebuilding your life is a viable option as well. Now, obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. It took me years and a few missteps here and there to pay down all my debts and start to rebuild my life. But it is possible. And sure, not every day of my sobriety is perfect. Those dark, depressed days come around. That's actually one of the main reasons why it took me so long to record episode two of Solitary Confinement. Because, you know, the depressed days and imposter syndrome shows up and, you know, I can't get anything done. But eventually, those dark days become less and less frequent, I promise you. So a special thank you to Dak Shepard for sharing and allowing us to be part of his recovery journey. And hopefully, both of our stories of missteps and recovery will help others either remain sober another day or give somebody the courage to take that first major step to getting help. And all I can hope for this episode is that it will reach the people it needs to reach when they need to hear it. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. This is Solitary Confinement with Rick Adams. Take care, and I love you guys.